Welcome to Meet the Master, a monthly series by Pilgrim Center of Hope for one and all to encounter Jesus in his words and actions. You can find Meet the Master on our website or your favorite podcast app with a new episode the first Friday of every month. Now, we invite you to Meet Jesus, the Master. Hello, and welcome to this month's Meet the Master. I am Mary Jane Fox. My husband, Deacon Tom, and I are the co-directors of Pilgrim Center of Hope, a mission of evangelization. The theme for this Meet the Master is being open to receive Jesus. Let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, Master, we place ourselves before you. We are seeking to encounter you and discover your goodness, your mercy. O oh Lord, inspire us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We now invite you to touch our hearts with your divine hand. Thank you. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. This month of December, when you think of so many things, of course, Christmas, Christmas provides a wonderful time to teach us anew that Jesus Christ became man, not simply to save the world, as the, but also he came as the Messiah King, and so that we could become children of God, beginning in baptism and an ongoing and ever-deepening manner through receiving his gift, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is the original Christian church, which began when Jesus himself went, uh, told Peter, You are rock. You are the rock on which I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Every pope since then has been part of an unbroken line of secession since Peter, the first pope. As we continue with our theme, being open to receive Jesus, we will begin with the scripture from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. These are the words of an angel sent by God to shepherds gathered in the field with their flock right outside Bethlehem. The angel begins with, be not afraid. When a message is sent to us from God, we shouldn't be afraid. The angel continues that he is bringing good news of great joy, which will come to all people. Oh, don't we want to receive good news? When we do receive good news, we are filled with joy. We are open to that good news, open to receive every detail about it. Well, the angel continues saying, For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The angel announces that the newborn child is the Savior, Christ the Lord. He is the Savior because he has come to save us from our sins. He is the Christ, that is, the Messiah, which was promised in the Old Testament and now born among us in fulfillment of that ancient hope. He is the Lord. This shows Christ's divinity. For this is the name God chose to be known by to his people in the Old Testament, and it is the way Christians usually refer to and address Jesus and the way the church always confesses her faith. And the creed, as we proclaim, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. God became a real man, had a real birth, and had a real physical body. This is an essential point of the Christian faith. St. Thomas Aquinas explains why the birth of Christ was revealed through angels. He explains, what is in itself hidden needs to be manifested. The flesh of him who was born was manifest, but his Godhead was hidden, and therefore it was fitting that this birth should be made known by angels who are ministers of God. 
This was why a certain brightness accompanied the angelic apparition, to indicate that he who was just born reflects the glory of the Father. Now, the words of St. Thomas Aquinas, who was a theologian, is quite in,、uh, unique and very different. But he's trying to, to really explain to us that, yes, Christ came in the flesh, but even the fact that the angel came to give us a message through the shepherds, it reflects the glory of the Father. The birth of the Savior, the Messiah, is the key event in the history of mankind, but God wanted it to take place so quietly that the world went about its business as if nothing had happened. The only people he tells about it first are a few shepherds. If we recall biblical history, it was also to a shepherd, Abraham, that God gave his promise to save mankind. In Christ's day, shepherds stood on the bottom of the social ladder. ladder. They shared the same undesirable status as tax collectors and dung sweepers. The shepherds that watched over their flocks by night in the biblical account in Luke were not men revealed, revered or esteemed by society. These were men marginalized by society. So, this foreshadowed Jesus' role as a good shepherd. By heralding the good news of Jesus' birth to the shepherds, Jesus hinted from the beginning what his plan was. Later in life, Jesus would say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. God's plan from the foundation of the world was for Jesus to give his life for us, just as the shepherds would have done for their sheep. The angels heralded his birth to those who exemplified this mission. The Son of God became incarnate in order to redeem and save all men, so it is very fitting that he be called Jesus, Savior. You and I need a Savior. You and I need to encounter Jesus' mercy and receive him as the Lord. When Adam and Eve sinned, their eyes were open. They realized they had made a wrong choice, they had gone against God. Each of us were born with this original sin, and we need a Savior to save us from remaining in darkness and remaining in, in a life without hope. The first affirmation or statement we make about Jesus is that He is the Lord. In the Creed, as I said earlier, we say, We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. The full meaning of the title includes the notions of authority. Dominion, kingship, and divinity. Beautiful. We can't have a, a personal relationship with Jesus on our own terms. The, ca- the Catechism of the Catholic Church states By faith, man completely submits his intellect and his will to God. With his whole being, man gives his assent to God, the Revealer. Sacred Scripture calls this human response to God. The author of Revelation, the obedience of faith. This is marked in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 143. I like that. The obedience of faith. To submit means the relationship is to be conformed to Jesus and his church. Furthermore, we can't settle for just me and Jesus' relationship and think we are done. It isn't just me and Jesus. It is a relationship with both Jesus, the Lord, and the church He gave us, which means we need a community, the body of Christ, as well. With that in mind, I would propose how,、uh, how, each, how each of us can have a relationship with Jesus and the Catholic Church. Thomas A. Kempis, who was the author of The Imitation of Christ, One of the most popular and best known Christian devotional books states how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. In this quoted statement, he says, You cannot live well without a friend. And if Jesus is not your friend above all else, you will be very sad and desolate. Thus, you are acting foolishly if you trust or rejoice in any other. 
choose the opposition of the whole world rather than offend Jesus. For him and in him, you must love friends and foes alike and pray to him that all may know and love him. End of quote. A life with Christ and in his and his church is a life of hope and peace. And I have discovered that in my own life. You know, once we choose to receive Jesus into our hearts, to our lives, we notice an inner joy, a peace that no one else can give. The world cannot give us this peace. When we become his followers and when we receive Jesus into our lives and embrace his teachings, we will have hope when the tough things of life hit us because we rely on his promises, on his mercy and his grace to sustain us. I have met individuals that were living in darkness, and when they learned about Jesus and discovered his mercy, they embraced him and, a whole, and began a whole new life with him. Choosing to believe the words of the angel as documented in the Gospel of Luke, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Scripture is filled with Christ's teachings, his stories of healings, his, con- his consoling words, and direction to live a life with him. In the second book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 2 to 3, we read, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. So now is the time. Receiving him by faith as your Lord and Savior is the most vital act anyone will ever do. We need new life. We need cleansing. We need healing. And he is the divine healer. Jesus gives us the living water in which we all thirst. This reminds me of a story that was told to us by a pastor, our pastor, a story of the Lord Jesus reaching out to someone in despair. It's about a woman who was experiencing depression and despair. One night, She thought of taking her own life. Well, she turned on the radio, and within a few seconds, she said she heard an announcement that St. Matthew Catholic Church Chapel was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The announcement was inviting people to stop by and spend time in prayer, ending with, stop and count your blessings. She decided to go to the chapel at that moment and spend time there. She came not knowing anything about the Catholic faith. She came to the chapel to seek some means of peace and consolation. Night after night, she returned to the chapel because she experienced something that she hadn't experienced anywhere else, a quietness, a peace that overcame her despair. She discovered healing. The reality is our Lord radiates his peace and love for those who open up their heart, their hearts to those who want to receive him. So if we open up our hearts to him, he, Christ responds. Many times, Jesus speaks in the scriptures about having a humble, contrite heart. The woman you just heard about was in despair. However, she chose to go to a place and simply reach out to God in her moment of of desperateness. God heard her cry. He touched her heart, and in the visits she made, she realized she experienced an incredible healing of the mind and soul. He can heal your heart as well. He He waits and longs for you to come to him. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, Jesus tells us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. What an invitation from the Lord Jesus, his very words inviting you, inviting me, 
inviting us to come to him and rest. But don't, you know, don't we feel weary at times? Don't we need that rest from the stresses of life? Of course we all do. Whether we live in a household with disorder, sickness, problems, we can discover Jesus can bring consolation and order to our soul. He can bring direction in our decisions. We cannot do it alone. We need him. We need his direction and the grace he gives us. I invite you to join me in this prayer, inviting Jesus into our hearts and receiving him as our Lord, our Savior, our friend. And as we prepare this, to pray this prayer, imagine Jesus standing in front of you and looking into your eyes with the deepest kindness and mercy. Let's begin. And as I say the words to this prayer, I will give you some time to repeat after me so that you can verbally also pray this prayer. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross to rescue me from sin and death and to restore me to the Father. I choose now to turn from my sins, my self-centeredness, and every part of my life that does not please you. I choose you. I give myself to you, Jesus. I receive your forgiveness and ask you to take your rightful place in my life as my Savior and Lord. Come reign in my heart, Lord. Fill me with your love and your life. Help me, Jesus, to become a person who is truly loving. A person like you, restore me, Jesus, live in me, love through me. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Friends, pray daily. Pray from your heart. You can begin anew. God loves you so much. He longs for you to remain with him every day. I've experienced the mercy and healing love of God. I was cured of an incurable illness. And when I encountered his divine hand on my heart and I realized that he forgave me, it impacted me. It changed my life. Did things become covered? perfect overnight? Oh no. It took time, but you know what? Our whole life's a journey, and every day is a new beginning. And that's how we need to look at this. Every day is a new beginning. When we invite Jesus, it is a new beginning. A life of hope and a life with peace of peace. I do encourage you to read the scriptures daily. The Catholic Church has a liturgical calendar listing the scripture readings prayed daily at Mass, and you can use this as a guideline. It helps a lot of people, um, you know, at least pray the Gospels every day, and you're united with the Church, with all those doing the same thing. If you have any questions or need further direction on prayer, feel free to contact us at Pilgrim Center of Hope, and you can do this through our website at pilgrimcenterofhope.org or by calling us at 210-521-3377. That's 210-521-3377. As we do with every Meet the Master, we share a virtue that complements our theme. I have chosen the virtue of perseverance. To persevere means to persist in spite of counter-influences, opposition, or discouragement. Oh, don't we need that, huh? 
the Pope、uh, Pope Francis has said, perseverance. Um, with perseverance, we can also define as patience. It's the ability to support, to remain faithful, even when the weight seems to become so big, and we are tempted to negative to to judge and abandon everything and everyone. That's very good, a good direction from Pope Francis. And one of my favorite scriptures is from Romans twelve, verse twelve. Rejoice in hope, endure in, infl- in affliction, persevere in prayer. You know this statement tells us three things: to rejoice in hope, which we all want to rejoice in hope and have hope. Endure in affliction. Oh boy, we need to endure the afflictions that we encounter every day, and to persevere in prayer. So this is a really good.、Um, this is one of my favorite scriptures, and I try to really、uh, live this each day. Um, with the grace of God, in fact, this is what the mission of Pilgrim Center of Hope stands on, and it has given me the drive to continue in my mission. To rejoice in hope, we need to be thankful for hope. And one of the biggest challenges I think we face in life is to never lose hope. Saint Catherine of Siena said, "Nothing great is ever achieved without enduring much." <laughs> Boy, that's true. It's hard to keep believing. Believing when we face disappointment, pain, and pressure, pressure. This is all the more recent. We need hope every day. And perseverance allows us to stay focused on the good during difficult times. It allows us to continue in the virtuous life when when times are tough. When we persevere, we are strengthened by God's gifts of habitual grace. A role model that persevered was Therese of Lisieux, also known as the Little Flower. She was a native of France who found the courage to challenge authority, and even though she was prone to illness and loved her widowed father dearly, she felt called to become a cloistered nun. But the order wouldn't accept her because of her age. Determined, she traveled with one of her sisters, her father, and a Catholic priest to meet Pope Leo the Thirteenth. She wrote a letter about this experience, and this is what she wrote. I didn't want to return without speaking to the Pope. I spoke, but I did not get at all. I did not get it all said because Father did not give me enough time. He said immediately, "Most Holy Father, she is a child who wants to enter Carmel at fifteen, but its superiors are considering the matter at the moment. I would have liked to be able to explain my case, but there was no way." The Holy Father said to me simply. If the good God wills, you will enter. Well, besides meeting with the Pope, she prayed at many shrines. She was able to enter the Carmel at Lisieux, France, in April of eighteen eighty-eight, when she was only fifteen. So, yes, it was God's will. Although she passed away at the age of twenty-four, she spread joy at the convent, and she was known for her perseverance in living a life of faith and hope. Well, we have come to the close of this episode of Meet the Master. Thank you for joining me. I so much enjoyed sharing with you. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Meet the Master. Contact me at Pilgrim Center of Hope. Let us end in prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, we bless you, for you are Lord and Master. Thank you for showing us your mercy through your death on the cross and your resurrection. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much that you are always with us. Help us to see you, and to recognize your gentle and still voice. Give us the eyes of faith to see you in our daily lives. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. May we grow in our faith and in perseverance to face each day with peace and assurance. You walk with us. Thank you. This we pray in your sacred name. Jesus, Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for listening to this month's Meet the Master. The link to your reflection guide containing reflection questions, quotes, and references can be found on the description for this episode. Or, if you're listening on our website, simply scroll below this audio player to locate it. We are so grateful to our sponsors who made this podcast possible. The family of Valentin Campos III and Cristina Campos. Would you like to help others meet the master? 
direct them to listen to the podcast on the Pilgrim Center of Hope website or on apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. And if you listen using an app, please take a few seconds to give the podcast a positive rating. Your simple action will signal to the app that Meet the Master should be recommended to people who are browsing for a new podcast to listen to. As we say at Pilgrim Center of Hope, every little bit helps. Thanks for helping us spread the word about Meet the Master. Look forward to next month's journey as we continue to Meet the Master. From all of us at Pilgrim Center of Hope, God bless you.